So, The Apprentice. I don't know about you, but I've always absolutely loved the show and it is back on TV this week. So, I thought I'd make a video all about the one time years ago I thought it'd be a good idea to apply to get on the show. So I was working full time at the time and I always wanted to start and run my own business and I've always loved the show so I kind of thought this would be a bit of fun to apply and see what happens. You can probably access the form on the BBC website if you want to have a look at it. It's probably changed a bit because this was back in 2011 but yeah it took quite a while and I tried to make my answers a bit of a mix of kind of the truth, uh, seriousness and try to make myself sound quite fun if I could. So that year um, I think around 150,000 people applied so I just thought there's no way I'm gonna get on but again let's just go and see what happens. So I filled out this huge long form online I think and sent it off and then I had an email back a week or two later to invite me to an assessment day type thing in Birmingham at the Radisson Blue Hotel and I think they did interviews or sort of these assessment days at a few different places around the country. I go to Birmingham, I was so nervous. I had, I was trying to look really professional, I'd bought a new outfit. All of a sudden it seemed quite full on and quite serious. Um, and I thought actually this isn't a bit of fun anymore, I actually really want to get on the show. So I'd had to sign some sort of confidentiality agreement so I couldn't tell anybody that I was going. Um, my husband did know, but no one else knew. I'm at the hotel, so I go up to like floor two or three and there's this huge waiting room with just rows and rows of chairs and I'm in my suit, I've got some sort of briefcase, notepad and pen, I've got copies of my CV and my application form, probably Alan Sugar's book. I've got everything to like, for every eventuality because they don't really tell you what's going to happen. I get called through to the next room. There was probably eight or nine of us and they made us line up against the wall and they were literally firing questions at us and just making us do like an elevator pitch, telling them about ourselves, about business ideas, about who we are, kind of simple stuff really, but you had 30 seconds. And everybody went down and I think I was like number four, so I think it was quite a good place because I wasn't at the end but had listened to a couple of people have a go already and a couple of people were quite shy and quiet and just quite normal really and I thought oh God, I'm not gonna stand out here so I almost like tried to become someone else and be really loud and exciting kind of theatrical just because when they've seen hundreds of people all day I felt I needed to stand out a bit so anyway, this craziness must have worked because they then took three of us through to the next room and everyone else it was like, go home. So I can't remember the exact order of the different interviews but there was a room where it was like a sit down interview with you and a producer or whoever and there was probably again 10 people in the room all having individual interviews and it was a bit like speed dating and they were just firing questions at us. It was all about the business plan and who we were but then they throw in things like, tell us your uh, most daring moment, or tell us your biggest mistake, or tell us something no one else in the world knows about yourself, and all stuff like this. So got through that, then I went into a room that was very long and thin, and there was a chair by the door, sort of immediately as you come in, and then there were two producers sitting right at the other end, on a desk, with pads and pens, taking notes. And... I don't know if they, I feel like they were doing this on purpose, that, but they didn't smile the whole time. They were kind of staring me down, trying to be really mean and serious. And I think they were trying to like channel Alan Sugar or Claude or someone to see if you could kind of handle the pressure. And they were ripping apart my business plan. This was not in the days when it was get a job with Alan Sugar, it was business plan time. You know, I'd done this plan and it was related to legal services because that's what I worked in at the time. But they were ripping it apart and it was a bit like Dragon's Den where they were just firing questions about what's happening in year five, about projected turnover or something and what happens if a shareholder does this. Things that you just wouldn't have thought of or been prepared for. Managed to get through that one and in between each stage 
they kind of would take you out and you'd be in another room or in like a waiting area thinking, what's happening now? Am I going home? Was that good or bad? Because I was kind of second guessing myself the entire process because you don't know what they want or what they're expecting. You don't know how you're coming across. Anyway, so then they'd just say, right, come this way. And I'm thinking, oh, this must be good. So the final room at the end of this corridor was the test filming room. So when you see the meet the candidates little clips and the interviews that are out at the moment, so the week before The Apprentice starts, um, those are actually filmed on that very first day, months before the filming of the show. And they are, at the end of the day, so those people have been interviewed all day, they're tired, they're hungry, they're hot. And that's why they look nothing like they do when you actually see them on the show, because they've then had months of probably buying new clothes, getting their hair done and getting ready to be on TV. And it was things like, what would be your party trick? Or tell us, and one they always do is, what three words would describe you? And people kind of always say the same things, and that's probably what I said, which was ambitious, hardworking, confident. I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those crazy fans who tried to get on the show and didn't, but still is really quite obsessed with it. Anyway, but basically went home that day, didn't have a clue what was going on, and just thought, well, that was a good day, but I've no idea how it went or what's going to happen next. So that was around June 2011, and then a couple of weeks later, I had an email to say, do you want to come to London? So the London thing was probably beginning of July 2011, and it was at the BBC studios in London. Um, they didn't tell me how many people would be there or what really would be expected of me, but it was gonna be a whole day. So at this stage, I was absolutely hysterical. And I was just so excited. Um, and every stage I was thinking, this could actually happen. And I was thinking, oh my God, I haven't told anyone. No one knew where I was. I'm thinking, what's gonna happen if I get on? I might've been a bit premature. Um, but you're not allowed to tell anyone. So you have to have a complete cover story. So I thought, what am I gonna say? I'm volunteering abroad. I've gone on a yoga retreat. I'm doing jewelry service. My parents didn't know, my work didn't know. So I'm in London and I think it was the fine or it was either the final 32, or there were two groups of 32, but basically there were some pretty hardcore people there, and I did feel a bit intimidated, to say the least, and I just thought, there's no way I'm getting on this show. But again, do your best to see what happens. Now, this London day was really intense. Um, I can't remember the exact order of the things that we did, but some of the um, activity activities... We then had to do a similar thing with how much money you thought each person earned a year. They made everybody stand up one at a time while you had all these cameras in your face and you had to sell some stupid object like a pen. I had a lampshade and you had to make up a USP. At one point we got all got taken out and no one could speak to each other and we had an hour to write an essay or some sort of political speech on uh, you had to create your own political party and you had to write a manifesto and you had to write what were your main, um, what was your mission, if you like, and what things would you change about the current government. Another task we had to do was split into boys and girls and we had to do uh, a proper task from the show. Well, it wasn't like a whole day thing, but we had to build furniture. So amongst ourselves, you had to decide on the project manager. I ended up being project manager because... I quite like building furniture and I quite like organising things and um, no one else really stepped forward and we were wasting too much time and I was like right I'll do it and I was like you I was like I don't care if you literally rip your clothes or cut yourself or chop off a finger we are winning this you need to get this built so there's all these bits and pieces and parts and tools and some people were like, I don't want to get my hands dirty, I don't want to get on the floor. I was at John floor, my like, tights were ripped, I, a nail had come off not fake nail, like I'd actually cut my own nail, um, I was getting splinters, uh, I was like hammering and stuff, but then they were, but then it was like, who are you going to fire, who are you voting off and all this stuff, um, and everyone turned on me and I was like, but we literally were, oh, in fact we did win because everyone then turned on me and they had to make someone be fired and I'm going, but we won, and the producer saying, no, but you've still got to fire someone, you've still got to go through the stages of the show, and then everyone fired me and I was like, but we have actually won. Um, but I think sometimes, a bit like on the show, you can't win. If, no, if you are a project manager and you do your best, you genuinely do, but you've got a rubbish team or it just goes wrong, 
you're probably going to get fired anyway. And if you don't step up, you're then criticised for standing in the background. Also in London, we had to do um, another task where you had like a real business to run. So we had, I think we were running a hypothetical Blackpool B&B. One girl sat down and said, right, I'm doing a SWOT analysis and started writing everything down. But we had like, you know, two minutes to do it. And it was so funny because people just don't work well together under pressure at all. And everyone was different ages, different backgrounds, had completely different styles. And say there's 12 girls or whatever there was, it was really difficult to work together um, doing each of these tasks. But I think that's how they do it on purpose. People were trying to make contacts and say like, let's work together and I can help you out. And um, yeah, let's keep in touch and stuff. So everybody swapped emails. And, um, and basically, if you're on the show, you have an email to say, you're gonna be on the show, you need to come down to London on these dates, let's go, get prepared. We'll help you out coming up with a cover story. We'll help you out with um, dealing with any exes or friends or family or anything negative that comes out in the press. They kind of squash any stories. They basically help with like PR and things. And then if you don't hear from them at all, that's it. It didn't go into your junk box. You know, they didn't forget you're not on the show. And then basically when the time came around that you would have heard by like midnight on this particular day, as you can imagine, I'm sitting there literally praying and um, yeah, no email. And I'm like refreshing all day and everyone's messaging it going, have you had anything? Oh no, I'm not in it. No, I haven't heard. So basically because it's all confidential anyway, no one would be allowed to say that they're on the show. So most people in the group had messaged and said, oh no, I haven't had an email. You know, I'm not on the show. And then a few people just, we hadn't heard from at all. But actually a few of the people that had emailed and said, oh no, I haven't had anything, were in fact on the show. So in my group was Ricky Martin, who was the recruitment consultant and he won that year. Um, there was Tom Gearing, who worked in wine investment. And then Nick Holter, who um, had an idea for the Whisk app um, to integrate uh, recipes and your ingredients and online shopping. But yeah, final thoughts. I'm really glad that I applied. I'm glad that I got that experience. It was really fun. I got to meet some really cool people and I'm still in business now. Not the same idea. But yeah, it would have been nice to get on the show, but um, yeah, it's fine, really. I think it's got a bit silly in recent years and I quite, I think they should do the business plans at the beginning and literally judge people on that and make them go into the interviews and present their ideas. I did love like the first few series where they were just quite normal people that worked really hard. By the way, um, I saw Ruth Badger the other day at the airport. I was so excited. Ruth, if you're watching, I know you're not, but you might one day, who knows. Um, if you know Ruth Badger, send her this video. Ruth, biggest fan. Um, I saw you at the airport. Uh, but I was too nervous to say hi. You're my favourite person of all time, of all series. Why am I talking to Ruth Badger? Anyway, thanks for watching guys. <laughs> I'll see you next week. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave me a note in the comments if you've got any questions. If you've ever applied for The Apprentice, who's your favourite candidate of all time? Like the video if you have liked it and click subscribe and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye!